company we all know and love, Emacs, has just announced a Cinewhoop, a digital Cinewhoop at that. It's right here, it's called the Cinehawk, and we're gonna check it out, so stay tuned. So first of all, thanks to Emacs for sending this to us to test. Uh, we've had it for a couple of weeks, and we've done a lot of flying with this thing. This is the Cinehawk. And it is a, of course, bigger version of a lot of their tiny hawks and baby hawks and all the other hawks in their lineup. Yes, I hear the mother hawk is calling. Must have born a lot of hawk children, baby hawks. No, but this isn't a baby hawk. This is a cine hawk. It's what's called a cine whoop, which is designed to carry an action camera and do indoor or tight space, tight gaps, or around people kind of flying and still get that FPV look and feel, but a little bit slower than a freestyle FPV and smoother is the objective. However, with this one, you don't really need an action camera on top of it because it's got the DJI Air Unit 03 built into it. Now, this is a self-contained video recorder. It has a micro SD slot on the side and it has a camera in the front. It's also the video transmitter and the receiver if you're using a DJI radio. So if you're using the DJI FPV V2 transmitter, then you don't even need another receiver built into this or soldered onto this. You can fly it natively with the V2 remote because it talks to this uh, O3 unit. Now what's amazing about the O3 unit is a couple of things. First of all, it shoots 4K 60, shoots beautiful video. The camera's pretty good quality compared to most FPV cameras that we're used to. And it has stabilization built in. So you can use DJI's Rocksteady, which is something that's on their action cameras, directly in this unit. So that means you don't have to carry an external camera. It means a lighter weight quad. It means one less thing to buy, one less thing to break, one less thing to worry about when you crash. And believe me, you'll do some crashing. I did. And it's got really good video quality right off the camera. If you were running Rocksteady, which is the electronic image stabilization that DJI has, it's gonna look really good straight off the card. But the other way you can do this, don't run Rocksteady, just run it normally. And when you look at the raw footage, it'll look a little shaky because you'll see the shakes and the movements and all that. And then run it through GyroFlow, which is a free program you can download. It reads the gyro data that's recorded in the video file and gives you very, very smooth video and allows you to do things like select horizon lock, where the horizon will stay level the entire time or turn that off and adjust how much stabilization you want. GyroFlow is an amazing program if you're flying FPV and especially if you don't wanna put another camera on top of this thing. Now, is there room for another camera? Yes, absolutely. You could fit a naked GoPro, you could fit an Action 2, you could fit uh, a Insta360 Go, Go 2, uh, or an SMO on here without any problem. But again, part of the reason you would buy this is so you don't have to. Much like the DJI Avada, the built-in camera system on this is good enough for 90% of the people flying it who are doing Cinewhoop stuff. Now, let me talk about a couple of features that are unique about this. First of all, Emacs has built the camera platform that holds the O3 unit on top of some vibration dampeners. And what that does is it isolates the vibrations that you get from the quad to the video recording as well as the camera. And while there is electronic stabilization that goes on after the fact, either through gyro flow or running directly in Rocksteady, having that vibration dampening really helps it look even smoother. It just gives you a better file to start with, a better, smoother video file without vibration. Now, this is a unique looking frame. It's got carbon fiber, of course, for the main frame. It's got some little struts that kind of give it some reinforcement in case you crash into things. And then it has plastic um, bumpers, plastic ducts out here that kind of help the propellers from running into stuff. Now, a couple of notes about that. First of all, this is a pusher, which means that the motors are mounted upside down. You'll notice that they are here upside down and they're pushing air away versus pulling air from the top, which is what normal FPV quads do. And that's another thing, both Chris and I were talking about, we were flying around inside several times with this, and it's nice that you can just bump off of something and keep going, unlike a uh, freestyle quad or a normal open prop quad, when you hit something, you're probably gonna break a prop and you're probably not gonna recover from it and at least hit the ground and have to go over and flip the thing over or turtle mode it or something like that. And then the safety factor, 
anytime you're flying around people, animals, expensive homes and expensive furniture, uh, walls, anything you don't want to damage, you're going to be glad you have these guards. Now, full disclosure, we did break one of these in a sort of freak accident. We were flying this through a very expensive house for a realtor, and we wanted to see how this did compared to the Avada. As far as flying in the house goes and getting good footage, did absolutely great. However, on our third or fourth flight coming out, uh, I was actually chasing it with the Avada, and Chris was flying this one, and it suddenly just had this freak out moment in the air. We caught it on video, and it sort of did this weird shaking back and forth, and then it flew over and bashed into the house and fell to the ground and nicked a prop, which was still flyable, but we replaced it anyway, and then uh, cracked this back guard here, which we just have some black gaffer's tape on right now. It was a pretty intense crash, and honestly, the fact that it survived that was pretty good. And then, yes, I did crash it a few more times in a bando. Uh, I did crash it a few more times <laughs> in a variety of places. Let's play the crash montage. So in terms of ruggedness, it has held up pretty well considering all the bashing both Chris and I have done with it. And it has this interesting little landing pad down here on the bottom that is a little bit lower than the props, and that allows it to actually just sit slightly off the ground so that it is not going to have the props hitting the ground, but it's going to need a flat, solid surface like a piece of wood or a sidewalk or something to take off from versus taking off in grass. Because of these pushers, they're very low to the ground. The Cinehawk features the Emacs Eco 2 2004 motors. And again, they're mounted upside down. And then it's got the Avon three and a half inch props, which are very interesting looking props. I've always liked the design of these. They're very kind of aggressive, almost medieval looking. They've got you know little notches in them and cutouts and bumps and dents and stuff that are supposed to be there and probably give it better lift. I would think that's the point. But what's really cool about these props, they're the same props that are on the Baby Hawk. So if you have an Emacs Baby Hawk and you have spare props for it, then you've got spare props for this one. You can share across the two. Now, as I said, you can use an ELRS transmitter and receiver in this. That's not what we're using. We're using it with the DJI V2 FPV transmitter and straight into the DJI box here. Generally, one of the reasons I like using the DJI controllers is the setup is really easy with those. There's literally a button on here that you push. You bind it to the goggles, then the controller, then you go into uh, Betaflight and you configure a few things, but it's really not that hard. But with this one, I was beating my head against the wall. This is a pre-production model, and it turns out that two of the wires, the S-Bus and the signal ground wire were reversed, and therefore it wasn't seeing the radio. Even though it was bound to the uh, air unit, it could see the air unit, and I was sending a signal to the air unit, but the air unit was not getting the signal back to the flight controller because those wires were reversed. Fortunately, my good pal Kai came to the rescue, and my good pal Chris, and we all got on a Zoom call, and Kai literally figured it out from down in San Antonio remotely by me holding it up to the Zoom camera and us just fiddling with it till we figured out what was wrong. We reversed the wires, and it was good to go. And so uh, I've been assured by Emacs that's not gonna happen in their production line. I tend to believe that, but this was a pre-production model and we had that challenge. One other thing to consider for this quad, it is designed for a 4S 850 milliamp hour battery. Now Emacs makes a 4S 850 milliamp hour battery. I think Race Day Quads makes one and several other manufacturers make them. I've got two different kinds of those batteries. I've got one that's kind of a little bit fatter and a little bit heavier, I think it's 103 grams. And then I've got one that's a little bit longer and skinnier, and I think it's only like 65 or 68 grams. We got more flight time out of the fatter, heavier one. 
optimistically of about four minutes, which I consider to be a little bit on the low end. However, considering what you're carrying here with ducted props and it is carrying an O3 unit and it's got a fair amount of uh, weight for a 4S quad, that makes sense that the flight time would be a little bit worse than other 4S quads that are more stripped down. Two other small complaints we have about this guy, uh, both of which I think are minor and could easily be fixed. One is the strap that Emacs provides. While it looks great and it fits well, it has a plastic buckle. And I've been told by several people, don't trust plastic buckles. And sure enough, I crashed it earlier and what happened, the buckle broke on the strap. So we have a zip tie in there right now that we've been using today. And that's a little bit of a pain. And then number two, this um, antenna that is supposed to fit here into this, um, I'm assuming this is a 3D print up here that's holding the antenna. The antenna doesn't really go into this very easily. The bottom of this antenna um, plastic part kind of is flared a little bit. And so what I probably need to do is cut it off there or cut out a little bigger hole in that spot so that this fits more easily in and out. The reason you can take the antenna out is really just for storage so that you can pull the antenna out and put this thing in a box and it's not sticking up you know, when you close the box on it. And I also found several times that while we were flying, we did whack the antenna on things because it's the highest point by far. Now, if you were carrying an Insta360 or a GoPro or any other camera on top of this, it would also be probably about as high as the antenna. So then you'd have to be more careful because you don't want to whack your brand new Hero 11. But the antenna itself is pretty flexible. And when you hit something, it just kind of moves. Um, I saw Chris going through a little gate and he hit the antenna and it, it kind of made a little and kept on going. So going back to the title of the video, goodbye GoPro, hello Emacs. That's the point is these type of Cine Whoops with the electronic image stabilization built into the O3 unit, I think are gonna revolutionize what we can do in terms of size, in terms of safety, in terms of cost, because you don't have to buy an external camera, in terms of weight, all of those kind of things are gonna be pretty standard going forward. The more and more these built-in cameras and DVRs become common, I think you're gonna see less and less need for an action camera on top of the actual uh, quad itself. The Avada is a great example of something like that, and so is this guy. If you don't wanna buy an Avada, if you don't want the really expensive batteries, you already have a bunch of 4S FPV batteries, you already have a uh, ELRS controller and, and receiver that you can put in it, or you have the DJI FPV2 transmitter, this is a nice standalone unit that you can just bind to the goggles and bind to the V2 transmitter, and you're good to go. Much like what happened with the original DJI Air unit and the Vista unit, where a lot of people built bind and fly Cine Whoops and Freestyles and Explorer quads, that's gonna start happening more and more with the O3 unit. And that's exactly what Emacs has done here. They built a really nice quad that is able to do some cool stuff, go through some tight gaps. Not really great on the power to weight ratio in terms of uh, doing freestyle and stuff, but you can certainly flip this thing and roll this thing. And uh, it did take a beating today. I like it a lot. I'm excited to see what we can do with it in terms of more Cinewoop work. We do have more uh, high-end houses that we're gonna be filming, so I'm excited about that, and we'll definitely keep this in our arsenal as something we use. So let me know what you think about the Emacs Cinehawk with the DJI O3 unit built in. I think it's a great little quad, but I wanna hear from you. Leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone. Don't fly alone.